When I started with pH positive ALL uh, about one and a half decades ago, uh, people thought I was crazy. Uh, it was a disease with an absolutely dismal outcome, uh, close to death uh, sentence. Um, but I was intrigued by uh, some preclinical work that had been done with uh, what is now known as acimatinib. Um, and uh, so uh, from the preclinical work, we uh, then went into the clinic uh, following in the lead of the, the CML uh, studies. And uh, we established that it was actually quite active. Um, and it turned out to be uh, even more active in patients who had not failed prior treatment, uh, which is the typical approach. Uh, and so that led to uh, a lot of trials, both in Germany, where I was at the time, and uh, of many international study groups and, and major centers to uh, look at the value of initially imatinib and then subsequently uh, the second generation TKI, uh, both alone and in combination with various types of chemotherapy. And uh, what, although we, we still have a long way to go, uh, it is now no longer the type of leukemia that uh, has the worst prognosis. We've had dramatic success, and, uh, and, and I think we have a number of ideas on the strategies of uh, how to improve further. It has changed it dramatically uh, because uh, even with the first generation TKI, uh, 90 to 100 percent of the patients achieved a complete remission. Uh, which was far in excess of what we seen before. In elderly patients, it was more in the range of 50%. And even in younger patients who received more intensive chemotherapy, we achieved a complete remission, maybe in 70%. So going from there to 90 to 100 was a dramatic change. The problem that we have with all of these TKIs, uh, if we use them alone or with chemotherapy, is that the majority of patients relapse. So these remissions are not sustained, and uh, this uh, necessitates a, a treatment strategy which starts with a TKI-based treatment. Uh, but so far, and, and I'm still a firm believer in it, incorporates allogenic stem cell transplant, if at all possible. So uh, there are a few patients who uh, actually have lived long-term, relapse-free, without a transplant. We, we are not able to identify them a priori. There are some surrogate markers that have been developed, uh, like m minimal residual disease as the, the foremost marker, uh, which uh, do give us an indication of what patient will definitely uh, need intensive transplant uh, as post-remission therapy. Uh, but even patients who are MRD negative do not necessarily um, avoid recurrence. So that is where, where we are. Okay, traditionally, age has been a uh, poor prognostic factor in, in ALL in general, and that also applies to uh, Philadelphia positive ALL. Uh, now, the, uh, the GRAF trial is uh, actually a, a beautiful trial. I like it very much. It's uh, mature data. It's prospective uh, randomized trial, which uh, addresses a number of, of very important uh, aspects, uh, starting from the role of the intensity of the chemotherapy, uh, showing that actually less is more, so that uh, with a TKI-based treatment, you can actually reduce uh, chemotherapy, and possibly avoid most of it in the initial stages of treatment. So you have less treatment-related mortality and far less morbidity, which is of huge benefit for the patients. Uh, it uh, further shows that overall allogeneic stem cell transplant has a clear survival advantage for the patient. Um, but it, in addition, uh, has a number of, of unique findings, some of them which were unexpected. Uh, so, for example, that there is a subset of patients who have a good molecular response who are able uh, to have the same long-term outcome with autologous transplant than with, uh, as compared to allogeneic transplant. Um, and, of course, autologous is, is easier to deliver. It doesn't have the uh, post-transplant complications. 
Uh, so this was one remarkable finding. Another one was that patients who had a very good molecular response uh, actually did well or equally well with chemotherapy and uh, with allogeneic transplant. Now the, the data between study groups differ and I, I would like to emphasize that the long-term outcome in these trials was in the range of about 50 percent, which means we still have to improve a lot. I think that chemotherapy is on our first list of, of agents that we would like to eliminate. Um, and that's where immunotherapies come in um, at different stages, uh, f starting from the uh, onset of treatment, uh, where we are planning uh, a clinical trial uh, within the AVAL, the European Working Group for Adult ALL, where we actually want to combine as an exploratory arm a, a TKI uh, with blinatumumab. Um, now, hopefully this uh, trial will be realized and that would actually be the first uh, essentially chemo-free trial for pH positive LL. There's a little bit at the pre -phase, as pre-phase when you have to establish the diagnosis and you have to have some intrathecal therapy to protect against central nervous system relapse. But otherwise, it would be a chemo-free approach. Uh, and possibly uh, also transplant-free. That remains to be determined. The other uh, areas where immunotherapy, I think, can make an impact um, either in replacing components of the chemotherapy or as an intervention when a patient has a molecular failure but not yet relapsed overtly um, is during consolidation and maintenance cycles. And Apart from uh, blinatumumab, inotuzumab is an interesting drug, an uh, anti-CD19 co uh, antibody conjugated uh, with a cytotoxic agent. And there are a number of other drugs in clinical development by various companies that target these surface structures on ALL cells. Uh, and I think could uh, have the potential to be additional game changers. Uh, all of them, as far as I would say in combination with TKIs and there uh, we, we also have an inter interesting addition to the armamentarium which is panatinib, uh, the uh, only approved TKI at the moment that is active against a very problematic kinase domain mutation uh, which uh, is uh, a cause, a major cause of resistance in the majority of patients who relapse on desatinib, for example. And uh, if we use it up front, and with m me, it's been pioneered by uh, colleagues at MD Anderson Cancer Center, um, but also the uh, GMEMA, the Italian study group, has a trial actually with monotherapy, and that looks exceedingly promising. No, I, I think uh, we. Uh, Looking back, uh, we have achieved a lot, uh, both diagnostically and therapeutically. Uh, we should, um, as, as the central message, I think, always uh, consider that if we have hematological relapse in this disease, uh, it is a very tough task and usually unsuccessful. Um, so using molecular therapies guided by molecular diagnostics I think is the core of what we will continue to pursue, and I'm very optimistic. Thank you very much for your time today. Glad.